I'm Sarah and I'm your success coach and this is the video presentation series called Resources for Success. This video is about study planning. How organized are you? We're going to explore a series of questions in this video. For example, your main concern might be something like, I am so busy, how will I have time to study? You might also have questions like, how can I stay on top of my assessments? Or, what is the most effective way to use a study planner? How do I learn to prioritize my tasks? And finally, what is procrastination and how can I stop it? So first of all, let's talk about why we need to plan our study. Why is this so important to get organized right from the very beginning? Well, it's very important to plan ahead so that you don't fall behind. Now, some of you might not have studied in higher education before, or some of you might be returning to higher education after a long break. So the thing is, higher education is different. It requires very time consuming and challenging tasks. For example, you'll need to read a lot and you'll need to do a lot of research before you can start writing your assessments. Therefore, it's very important to be organized right from the very beginning so that we can reduce stress, anxiety and panic. So let's talk about planners first of all. There are several different types of planners that we can use and it's usually recommended to use more than one of them at the same time. For example, you can use a semester planner, a monthly planner, a weekly planner and even a daily planner. And here are the kinds of things that you might put in your planner. Now, if you're studying online, you probably won't have to attend a physical class. However, you'll need to make time to listen to your recorded lectures. You'll also have practical clinics that you need to attend from time to time. The other kinds of things that go in your planners are your assessment due dates and other commitments in your life. For example, your work, if you have a family, you might have commitments with your children. And of course, we mustn't forget we need to fit in hours of study time as well. So first of all, let's talk about using a semester planner. Now, in Moodle, you'll see that you'll have access to your subject outline in each individual subject. And in your outline, this is where you can find all of your important dates, your assessment due dates, your practical clinic dates, and your exam dates. So please make sure that you download your subject outline, have a close look through and get all of those dates in your semester planner so you can see the big picture. It's also very important to have a weekly planner. So we have the semester planner for the big picture, but it's very easy to think that things look further away than they really are. Oh, I don't have that due for another three weeks, I'm okay. But things come up a lot more quickly than we're expecting. And it's very important to know what we're going to do week to week as well. So with a weekly planner, you can and you should make a new weekly planner every week because your commitments may move. So therefore your study time will move also. And we need to be very flexible about this kind of thing. So before you start making your weekly planner, think about how best you'd like to do it. Are you the kind of person who's always on your phone? If so, maybe your weekly planner should be on your phone. Or if you're more the type of person who carries a physical diary, you might want to keep it with you physically. Or you might want to print it out, stick it on your wall, something like that. Whatever works for you, but think about how you will see it. So this is what a weekly planner might look like. Yours doesn't have to look the same as mine. You might have slightly different times. Mine starts from 7 a.m. goes to 11 p.m. Now this blank one, you can actually find a copy of this on Moodle. If you go over here into your main menu where it says study resources from your success coach, click here and you will find a link to your weekly study planner. This one's completely for you to download and print as you like. So let's look at a completed example. Now in my example, you'll notice that I've actually color coded this one. Now I'm not a very visual person. So for me, the colors help me remember which bit belongs to which. So I know that for example, all my blue parts are when I'm at work. It's just easier for me that way, but you can do it however is easiest for you. Now this is based on working four days a week, nine till four. Then I've got to go and pick up my kids between four and five. 
I've actually allowed myself some time to travel to work as well. I'm driving between eight and nine in the morning, I'm driving to work. So I need to make sure that I put in my travel time. Now, if you're catching a bus or a train, you might be able to fit in some study at that time as well. But if you're driving, you might have to find another time. As you can see, I've also put in my dinner time. I've got to come home and cook for my husband and my kids, so that takes up a bit of my time as well. So I've got that in my planner too. Now, once I've put in all of these solid commitments that happen every week, I really need to find myself some study time. As I said, in higher education, there are a lot of time consuming things that we have to do. We have to do a lot of research and reading and there's writing as well, but research and reading takes time. Listening to your lectures takes time, making notes, revising, preparing for your exams. All of these things take time and you need to be planning around 15 to 20 hours a week like a part time job so that you have enough time to get everything done. So as you can see, I've tried to be realistic about my time. Wednesday's my day off, so I've given myself a larger study day. I've given myself study time in the evenings, but not on Mondays, because on Mondays, I'm recovering from the weekend and I'm a bit tired. I've given myself a day of rest on a Sunday, and I've also given myself a Friday night off because I like to go out with my friends, right? So I've tried to be as realistic as I possibly can. I'm making myself study for half of Saturday and then I get the rest of Saturday and Saturday night off. But again, you'll have to improvise a little bit, practice a little bit, see what study time works for you. If you find that you need more, you'll have to schedule yourself some more. If you've got an exam coming up, you might have to give yourself a few extra hours. But this is about how it would look. The other thing that's really important with using your planner is, as you can see, most of my orange study blocks are scheduled in two hour blocks. Now this is because your brain doesn't function at peak efficiency after two hours. It starts to get tired. So you'll need to schedule yourself some breaks as well. You might also notice that I'm not studying after 10 o'clock at night. This is because sleep is very important for your brain. If you study too close to your bedtime, you will not be able to sleep well. It'll be very difficult for your brain to switch off. So that's why I'm trying not to study too late in the evening either. Okay, so let's talk about a daily planner. Now a daily planner is very good if you're a particularly busy person or if you have some particular challenges with time management, you might like to make yourself a little daily checklist. It's a good idea to have one that actually has boxes where you can tick. It's sometimes very helpful visually to keep yourself on track like that. Now we should rank our to-do list in order of priority. What must be done today? These should be the tasks that go at the top. What should be done today but could be done tomorrow? They should be next. And finally, if we have time, we can add some more, which could be done at a later date. It's also very important to reward yourself. If you actually complete all of your most important tasks, give yourself a little reward. Have a bubble bath or a glass of champagne or whatever it is that you like to do. This can really help you stay in a positive frame of mind about completing tasks. Now, we were talking about scheduling our study time in two hour blocks. This isn't actually enough. If I say, for example, I'm going to study on Wednesday morning between nine and 11 o'clock, that's good, but it's only the first step. To be able to study, actually use my time successfully, I need to make some study goals. Now, a really good formula for making a study goal is called SMART F. It used to be called just SMART. The F has been added recently. SMART F stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound, and the F is for flexible. So here's an example of how you can create a SMART F study goal. If you like, pause the video for a moment, have a close look at this table, see what I mean by this. I'll just explain it very briefly for you now. You could say, I need to write an essay. Okay, but I need to get much more specific here. I'm going to write the first section tonight. I'm going to write the first two pages so that I can measure it. I know that this is a realistic thing because I've done this before. Okay, I want to finish the task by nine o'clock this evening. However, I can be flexible about this. I could finish it tomorrow morning if I get interrupted. If I have a very specific goal like this one, I'm much more likely to actually accomplish the task. Now, 
Let's talk about procrastination. What is procrastination exactly? This is when we just can't seem to get started on a task. We just sit there staring into space, or we know that we've got to get this done, but we just can't quite seem to get started. So there are three really common reasons for procrastination. Firstly, it's too hard. Secondly, it's too boring, and I really don't like doing it. And thirdly, I just don't know what to do to get started. Well, if you've watched this video so far, if you've been completing your study planner, making your smart F goals, you should be okay with getting started. So we have to tackle the problem of it being hard or boring. How can we overcome procrastination? Well, here are some tips. I talked before about the importance of rewarding yourself. For example, when you complete your checklist, give yourself a glass of champagne. It's very similar with procrastination. When I was in high school and I had to do written exams, what I did was I brought a very large jar of Skittles, you know, the little colored lollies, into my exam with me. And every time I wrote one sentence, I had a Skittle. And this was actually really helpful for me. It helped me write my sentences and stay focused. And the action of chewing also helped me focus as well. Now, you're going to have lots of different ways to reward yourself. I'm not suggesting you should eat a Skittle. You know, I can't ever eat a Skittle again. I've never been able to look at them ever since. But rewarding yourself is really positive. It really helps you stay in that positive frame of mind and make you feel good that you're achieving your goals. Another thing you can do, we talked about the importance of breaks before. This is also a kind of reward. I'm going to study for two hours, then I'm going to have a break for one hour and watch my favorite show on Netflix. And if I do that, I'll feel better and I can start studying again. That's also quite an effective thing to do as long as you have the discipline to restart. Another thing which is very good for your brain and therefore also good for procrastination is to switch tasks constantly. Your brain likes to switch tasks. It doesn't like to study one subject for a long period of time. For example, even if you need to study one subject, you can do different tasks within that subject. You can read for an hour and then write for an hour, and your brain will feel better about that. And finally, don't forget to talk to yourself in a positive way. Focus on the things you are good at and focus on the things that you've achieved. It's no good saying, oh, I'll never be able to do this in two hours. This is way too much for me. Chances are you won't get started if you think like that from the beginning. It's much more productive to say, yeah, two hours. OK, we can definitely do this. You know, when I talk to myself, I always refer to myself as we. It makes me feel like I'm on a team. I don't know. It helps me try it for yourself. See if it feels less corny. I always say, yeah, we can do this. Four articles. We need to read this in two hours. We can definitely do that. I know that I'm a really good reader. So if I bring up this skill and I talk to myself about it, I'll feel good and then I'll get started. Lastly, here are my top tips for this video. Don't forget to be flexible. Your study plan is only a guide. Your study goals are only a guide. They can be changed. Don't forget about the F and the smart F. Be realistic about your time and what you can and can't do. I know that I'm not going to get up at seven o'clock in the morning and study because I do not like mornings. My brain does not feel good. So this is not a realistic thing for me. Be aware of your energy levels. When do you feel best? When do you feel most receptive? This is when you should be planning to study if possible. Try not to be a perfectionist. It causes mental blocks. It slows you down. Get everything on paper, tidy it up later. Consider joining or starting your own study group and definitely connect with your peer mentor. You can find a link to the peer mentor Facebook pages for your state in Moodle as well. And finally, remember to look after yourself. It is so important to eat well, to drink water, to sleep, to practice self-care. Please watch the video presentation about self-care. You'll find a lot of advice. Well, that's the end of our Plan Your Study presentation. Here is me. Please feel free to contact me for an appointment if you'd like to talk about this some more or if you want some help completing your study planner. There's my email address and my phone number there. I'm here for you. Don't hesitate. See you in the next video.